Welcome to Let's Talk Real Estate. I'm Janet Palumbi. And I'm Dean Palumbi. And we sell... Real estate. That's right. We have been selling real estate for almost 22 years. That's a long time, isn't it? That's a really long time, Janet. It is. Well, today we are going to talk a little bit about what is a realtor. Uh, there has been a post that has been circulating Facebook the last few weeks, and it says at the top of that post, so you want to be a realtor. So you think you want to be a realtor. Well, you're going to want to think long and hard about that because there's a lot of things that go into being a realtor. And maybe you do, but this is really important to know about. It is. So the post starts out saying there's a lot of talk in the news about real estate agent commissions. There's been a lawsuit that's going around circulating and it's been um, a little bit crazy questioning a real estate agent's commissions. Well, basically it says realtors love what they do and they do it because they love helping people but there is almost always a huge misconception on what they do and how they get paid but it's not a secret i mean you know a lot of people have jobs and i never get to see their paycheck well realtors is one industry that everybody gets to see what we make on a real estate transaction, don't they, Dean? They know it before, during, and after. That's right. We get to share what we make. Now, the average full-time realtor's earnings last year was $31,900 at 40-plus hours a week. Notice I wrote full-time 40-plus hours, not 0 to 20 hours a week, which is well below the living wage. As a realtor, we do not get paid an hourly wage or salary. We only get paid if we sell a home and it closes. We only get paid by broker to broker. As an agent, you could work with someone days, weeks, months, or even years with no guarantee of a sale ever. And we have. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, we wake up each day unemployed, going on job interviews, deal with constant rejection, we dedicate time away from family, use our time, gas, pay for babysitters, miss dinners and weekends, and rarely take vacations. We are on 24-7. We constantly need to be on or we could miss an opportunity. Once we do close a home, half goes to the other person's agent from the remaining half. They have lots of upfront expenses that must be paid out before we even get paid. So let's talk a little bit about some of the fees that we have to absorb as a realtor. Um, broker splits and fees, okay? Bro let's talk a little bit about yeah. broker splits. Broker splits and fees. So, so when you look at, let's just say a realtor um, transaction yielded $10,000. $10,000 as a seller I gave for the buyer and seller to do with whatever they needed to. The $10,000, let's say it went half to $5,000 to the buyer's agent who sold the home and to the five to the listing agent. Both agents have an obligation to compensate their brokers. See, they're agents, but the broker gets a part. So a lot of them start out at 50%. Yep. So that $5,000 is also now $2,500. Yep. Okay. We have MLS fees, National Association of Realtor fees, and local association fees. And we're not talking $20, people. We're talking big fees that we pay to all the different realtor associations, correct? MLS, board fees, annual fees, yep. national association, local, local association. Yep. On top of that, we are required to carry E&O insurance. Errors and emissions. Errors and emissions. We pay that every other year, and that is also not cheap. So um, we are a husband and wife team, mm -hmm. and we are both fully licensed. So we both have to pay all of these fees. This is our primary income. I don't have a husband that's a engineer. You don't have a wife that's a teacher or a nurse. This is our primary income and all these fees, we both pay them. We do. Um, let's see, uh, self-employment tax is another biggie. We mm -hmm. get to pay self-employment taxes to the government, yes, don't we? we? Do. Yes, we do. And that is a pretty astronomical percentage on our taxes. And we get to pay it and have it withheld from our current earnings from last year's business. That's right. So let's say you had a good year like we did last year, and this year's a little off because of interest rates. That's no secret. We're withholding 
from our income the and prepaying year. on a quarterly basis yep. to the government on last year's income. And our commissions don't come in that way. Our commissions come in, we might have two great months and then we might have three really bad months, but we still are required to pay quarterly mm -hmm. based on the previous year. Doesn't matter how much money we've made so far. Um, and those quarterly fees, they, they, they're, they're usually equal payments throughout the year, and we just have to pay them. It's a, and if we don't pay them, we get a penalty in the following tax season. And we're doing this based on our gross. Right. Well, yes, based on our gross, <laughs> gross income. Okay, so there are also a lot of advertising and marketing fees that we have to pay ourselves. Um, showing service fees, website fees, assistance. Some people have assistance. We don't. It's just us. We don't have minions. Um, but some people have assistant salaries to pay, uh, transaction coordinators. We do pay for all of our own yard signs. Um, we do our own photography. Some people hire photographers and videographers. We pay all our own office supplies, business cards, property flyers. We pay for our own chamber fees and networking fees. If we join the local chamber or we network in different organizations, those fees fall on us. How about the generation? Yep, lead generation. Massive expense. Yep. If you think you can generate all of your own leads, you might be looking at yourself wondering what you're doing for a living. That's so right. It's expensive to generate additional leads. Very expensive. And we're careful with that expense. That's right. Uh, electronic lock boxes. Uh, continuing ed. We have to pay for now. The boards used to do it free. Now they're charging us a small fee, but we do have to pay for continuing ed. Um, gas. That's a biggie. Fortunately, gas... Prices are down a little bit, but when they were up there, ooh, we work all over <laughs> East Tennessee, and we were driving up to Gatlinburg, to Crossville, all around the Knox, greater Knoxville area, and those gas fees were pretty astronomical when the fees were high. So whatever gas is, that's what we pay. Yeah. Um, income taxes are not taken out, so they have to. We have to put aside. I put aside usually about 35% to pay my taxes because um, I never know. I don't want to have to pay at the end and I never know what that fee is going to be. Don't forget health insurance. If you don't have a spouse that provides health insurance, which you and I do not, right. we pay some pretty large fees for health care. And health care is not cheap anymore, people. So <laughs> let's talk about as a listing agent, we have a ton of tasks to do. I'm going to just run through some of these. We, can, might, we might talk a little bit more about them, but I'm going to run through some of these. Preparing listing presentations for sellers. We research seller's property tax info. We research comparable sold properties. That's called a CMA. If any of these you want to talk a little more about, jump in, okay? We determine average days on the market. We gather info from sellers about their home. We meet with sellers at their home. We get to know their home. We present listing presentations. We advise on repairs and or upgrades. We explain current market conditions. We discuss seller's goals. We share our value proposition. We present marketing options. We explain buyer and seller agency relationships. That's a biggie. Um, talk a little bit about that one, Dean, because there, there's so much that goes into listing a home. Well, and going back to repairs, so it's, it's a, lot, a lot of things stir fear in a seller and a lot of things stir fear and anxiety in a buyer and typically home inspection is one of them so who you represent is important if you're with the listing and you have we're just talking about listing. listings right now right so we've listed your home we know that there are things that are maintenance we know the things that are wear and tear we know what things are wrong that are going to need to be fixed before an appraiser for a potential borrower it's buying your home it's going to call for if you walk in the garage and the panels off your electrical box and there's wires hanging out of it that is not going to pass that's going to have to be addressed and tightened up before you put it on the market better than even after you have it sold because it's going to get less money for your home right. so we're going to teach you about those must things and there's cosmetic stuff that's not so critical we'll help you know the difference right we have to make sure that listing agreement and all disclosures are signed properly. Mm -hmm. um, establish showing instructions for the buyers. Uh, we have to install electronic lock boxes and yard signs and um, directional signs. Yeah. Set up showing services, help owners coordinate showings, gather feedback after each showing, keep track of showing activity, 
update MLS listings as needed if we have a price drop or a price change or anything that changes. We have to update them. We might get updated pictures. Um, sometimes you take a picture and it's a little bit dark out and we want better pictures. Yeah, you can't control the sunlight, right? Correct. So we come back the next day, the Correct. next day, and the next day. Hey, you said something important, Janet. When you're a seller, the real property seller's disclosure, this is not something you do by owner. This is something you may not even do at all if you sell by owner. But then you face legal liability because that buyer will come back and sue you if you didn't disclose a known defect, a known defect with your home. Right. So we're going to review that with you and make sure you understand what a defect is and what you should disclose to a buyer so that you don't face that litigation later on in life. Or maybe there's nothing to disclose. You're worried about something silly that is not an issue to disclose. We're going to have that private conversation and that's one way to keep you out of hot water. Selling real estate today by owner is dangerous. And for all of you that think we don't earn what we do, I'm so far only halfway through the list of the listing side. Schedule weekly update calls with seller. Prepare net sheet for all offers. Present all offers to seller. Obtain pre-approval letters from buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. Examine and verify buyer's qualifications. Examine and bar verify buyer's lender. Negotiate all offers. Once under contract, mm -hmm. make sure everything goes to the title company. Check buyer's agent has received copies. Change property status in the MLS. Deliver copies of contract addendum to seller. Keep track of copies for office files. Coordinate inspections with sellers. Are y'all getting tired yet? Explain buyer's inspection objections to sellers. Determine seller's inspection resolution. Get all repair agreements in writing. Refer trustworthy contractors to sellers. Confirm clear to close. Coordinate closing times and locations. Verify title company has all docs. Remind seller to transfer utilities. Make sure all parties are notified of closing times. Resolve any title issues before closing. Receive and carefully review closing documents. Review closing figures with seller. Confirm repairs have been made. Resolve any last minute issues. Attend the seller's closing. Pick up signs and lock boxes. Change status in MLS to sold. I'm tired thinking about all this stuff. This is this post that has been going through Facebook. This is just a small example of what we do when we list a property. You need to be an organized person. Um, that's a lot of stuff on the listing side, right? As a buyer's agent, mm. we also have many tasks. Schedule time to meet buyers. Meet buyers and discuss their goals. Explain buyer and seller agency relationships. Discuss different types of financing options. Help buyer find a mortgage lender. Obtain pre-approval letter from their lender. Explain what you do for buyers as a realtor. Provide overview of current market conditions. Discuss earnest money deposits. Explain home inspection process. Gather needs and wants of the next home. Explain recording devices during showings. Learn all buyer goals and make a plan. Send buyer homes within their criteria. Start showing buyer homes that they request. And that could be many, many, many homes for many, many, many weeks, months. Schedule and organize all showings. Gather showing instructions for each listing. Send showing schedule to buyers. Show up early and prepare for your showings. Look for possible repair issues while showing. Gather buyer feedback after each showing. Update buyers when new homes hit the market. Share knowledge and insight about homes. <sighs> Listen and learn from buyers at each showing. Discuss homeowners associations. Estimate expected utility usage costs. Explain property appraisal process. Discuss multiple offer situations. Update buyers on any price drops. Discuss MLS data with buyers at showings. Find the right home for buyers. Determine property inclusions and exclusions. Prepare sales contract when buyers are ready. Educate buyers on sales contract options. Determine need for lead-based paint disclosures. Explain home warranty options. Update buyers pre-approval letter. Choose a closing date. Review comps with buyers to determine value. Prepare and submit buyer's offer to listing agent. Negotiate buyer's offer with listing agent. Execute a sales contract and disclosures. Once under contract, send to title company. Coordinate earnest money drop off. Deliver copies to mortgage lender. Obtain copy of seller's disclosure. Deliver copies of contract addendum to buyers. Coordinate inspections with buyers. Meet inspector at the property. Review home inspections with buyers. 
negotiate inspection objections, get all agreed upon repair items in writing, check in with lender to verify loan status, check on the appraisal date, negotiate any unsatisfactory appraisals, coordinate closing time and location, make sure all docs are fully signed, verify title company has everything, remind buyers to schedule utilities, make sure all parties are notified of closing time, solve any title problems before closing, receive and review closing documents, Review closing figures with buyers, confirm repairs have been made by sellers, perform final walkthrough with buyers, resolve any last minute issues, attend closing with buyers, give keys and accessories to buyers. Whew. Exhausting, isn't it? All the while, we need to be prospecting and being new buyers and sellers. That's right. So we have to be extremely knowledgeable in so many different areas when we sell real estate. Now. You don't need to buy or sell to support agents in their real estate businesses. Here's just a few simple ways to show your support. By sharing one of our listings, sending a friend or family member our way, letting us connect with agents outside of our error for broker to broker referrals. We've done quite a bit of broker to broker referrals in other states. Um, Dean and I owned a brokerage in Florida for many years. We know agents in Florida mm -hmm. and in states where we don't know an agent, um, Dean is really, really good, especially at vetting agents in other areas. I'll explain that. So when you call us, you call us one time, you get a call back lightning fast. If you didn't get us in person, if you email us, you get a response back within an hour, mm -hmm. usually faster than that. So we're always Full time on is time, right? Yes, exactly. So when you're trying to find the right agent in Ohio, let's say, and you're selling your house, and you're coming here, we're going to show you just exactly how we find out who's in the business and who's dabbling in the business. You need a dedicated full-time professional. We'll come back and show you what they look like, what their website looked like, what the response time was, who they are, and that they're willing to cooperate with us because guess what? You don't really know them well, and you really want to know something about their abilities. A contract comes in on your house, you can send it to us here in Tennessee and we'll look at it and make sure that the Ohio agent is actually working for you as well. So you've got a team, a team here in Tennessee with you and the people we believe are the right folks in the other state. Right. Um, and one super important thing you can do to help us is leave positive comments and reviews on our social media sites and like, share. And I think that um, you have some places where people can contact us and ways to contact us. Absolutely. Right? So please take a look at our Facebook page, which is Plumbi Team at Realty Executives, Plum by Team, Realty Executives on Facebook. And if you would like us, okay, and share that Facebook page. We are on Instagram. And there you can find us under the words all together, Knoxville Home. Knoxville Home should bring you to Jan and Dean. YouTube is a place where we have all bets off. You're gonna learn about us. You're gonna see things about us with real estate, closings, advertising, you're gonna see us cooking on our Blackstone, you're gonna see us camping, you're gonna see us do things that we do. And by the way, Janet said something interesting. You said we never take vacation. Um, we take our job with us. We take our job with us and we take our job seriously. So we're working 24 seven wherever we are. When we're remote, we've got computers, Wi-Fi, laptops, right. video. We've got agents in the field that we can rely on to help us if we're away. You're gonna get service. And we're going to be your eyes and ears, and they're going to be your eyes and ears together. You can also find us on LinkedIn. You can find us on LinkedIn under Dean Palumbi and the Palumbi team, team, Janet and Dean. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So those are just a few. Next door, the Next Door app is a hyper local <laughs> way to see us. And people are seeing us every hundreds. Mm -hmm. Within 48 hours, people see what we do. Hundreds of them. So that's really been a really new tool and fun tool. And what's our email information and our phone number, Dean? Okay, great. You can reach us at phone or text at 865-317-3765. And also you can text us at that same number. Our email address is make it a plumbi, and we spell it funny. It's P-A-L-O-M-B-U-Y, like buy a house from us. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. That's right. So that's just a little bit about how to reach us. So, do you want to be a realtor? Weigh your options out very carefully. We've been doing this 22 years now and it is 
It looks fun, doesn't it? Lots of people come to us and say it looks fun. It is fun. It is fun. We love what we do, but it isn't just Very fun. Hard. It's a lot, it's a lot of hard. hard work, and you really have to know a lot of things about the industry. You can't just think it's fun to look at homes. So, I'm Janet. And I'm Dean. We are the Pull'em Buy Team. When you buy or sell, make, make it, it a Pull'em Buy.